Thank you. That concludes topical questions. The next item of business is a statement by Kate Forbes on transforming Scotland's tech sector. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement. And I call on Kate Forbes. Up to 10 minutes, Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer. In August 2020, the Government published the Scottish Technology Ecosystem Review. It was a blueprint to establish Scotland as a leading hub for tech startups. It was written, as members will know, by Mark Logan, former Chief Operating Officer of Skyscanner, one of Scotland's first tech companies to achieve a valuation of over £1 billion. Professor Logan's report was greeted with acclaim on publication. It was described as, and I quote, an exciting route map for how the government and private sector can work together to build Scotland into a global leader. Today, I'd like to provide an update on progress against that route map, backed up by £45 million of Scottish Government investment, and how it's building a sense of momentum and excitement in Scottish tech. That sense of momentum is being felt in London, where tomorrow the First Minister will open the EIE London Innovation and Investment Showcase, an event aimed at strengthening the gateway to global investment and finance for Scotland's most innovative companies. It's being felt in Silicon Valley, where a government funded cohort of 20 Scottish startups arrived last week on a curated visit arranged by Startup Ground the world's largest community for startups, founders and innovators. And it's being felt at home in Glasgow, where next week we're co-funding the first Glasgow Tech Fest at the University of Strathclyde, bringing together founders, businesses and the Scottish tech ecosystem in the city to help the sector grow and flourish. These aren't isolated examples. They're all connected because they are happening thanks to our Scottish Tech Ecosystem Fund, recommended by the Logan Review to make strategic investments in what ecosystem builders call social infrastructure, creating the best possible network and environment for founders and startups to succeed. 34 awards, totaling more than £1 million, have been given by the fund, delivering an exciting and diverse range of meetups, events, and projects like the three I've just mentioned. That work has engendered a distinct buzz around Scottish tech, but there's an even greater buzz about what is still to come. Last October, we invited suppliers to tender for a contract to establish a national network of five tech scalar hubs in Glasgow, in Aberdeen, Dundee, Edinburgh and Inverness. These hubs will provide Scottish companies with commercial education sourced from the best providers in the world. This education will be complemented with physical co-location, first-rate mentoring and vibrant peer communities. And through state-of-the-art remote technologies, all of that will be available virtually in every single community in Scotland. These tech scalers are a game changer. They'll deliver for Scotland one of the most sophisticated and comprehensive state-funded environments for the creation and the scaling of startups available anywhere in Europe. They'll put Scotland on the global startup map and will promote their services relentlessly to attract the world's most talented founders to establish their businesses in Scotland. The tender exercise is almost complete, and I expect to announce the winning bid in early summer. Presenting officer, building momentum is one thing, but sustaining it over a period of generational change requires deeper, longer term investment. Professor Logan's route map recognises that, calling for far-reaching changes to the teaching of computing science in Scotland, raising it to a level where it's considered just as important as physics or maths. And here again, we've made significant strides towards delivery. In partnership with the University of Glasgow, we've established a new organisation, Scottish Teachers Advancing Computing Science, or STACS for short. Stax is led by two teachers, an inspiring young woman named Tony Scullion, founder of the coding club charity Dress Code, and a deeply experienced former head of department named Brendan McCart. They're supported by the University of Glasgow's Professor Quinton Cutts, one of the UK's leading experts in computing science pedagogy. 
Together, they will act as critical friends, driving improvements in equipment, teacher training, the curation of best practice. And working with Tony and Brendan, we've invested over one million pounds to add to schools existing stocks of computing hardware, putting more kit into classrooms and into the hands of teachers and pupils. We're designing a new plan for professional skills development in computing science to build teachers' confidence and help them keep pace with rapid change. And later this year, we will pilot this plan in partnership with one of our local authorities before a national rollout. And our ambitions for tech do not end in schools. Last year, we invested a million pounds in the Digital Start Fund, a programme which supports people on benefits or low income to undertake courses with providers such as CodeClan, giving people the skills that they need for a well-paid career in tech. We invested a further £500,000 in the Digital Skills Pipeline, a bespoke set of modular courses running from beginner level all the way through to advanced coding. And we provided grant funding of £150,000 to Code Your Future, a truly exceptional organisation which supports refugees with the skills and the networks necessary to progress in education and employment. Together, these programmes have supported around 600 people to re-skill and re-energise their career. Presenting officer, this government is delivering on its promise to transform tech in Scotland. And in doing so, we're dismantling long-standing barriers to entry and opportunity in the sector. Here, we will benefit from the whole system review of female-led enterprise in Scotland, which I've asked Anna Stewart, the founder of iDesign Group PLC, to carry out. Anna has invited Mark Logan to contribute to the development of that report. It is clear that there is much to be done. In today's uh, country, uh, female founders get less than a penny out of every pound of venture capital invested. That position is quite clearly intolerable, and that's why the Scottish National Investment Bank has agreed to support the all-female investor group Investing Women Angels to establish a new investment fund focused exclusively on women and minority founders based in Scotland. That makes Scotland one of very few European nations with a bespoke seed investment fund focused on stimulating the growth of female-led companies. And it delivers yet another of Mark Logan's recommendations. This year, we will pursue delivery of another exciting suite of recommendations. We'll build a national network of coding clubs, ensuring young people and children enjoy equity of access to extracurricular learning, irrespective of where they come from. And we'll create an investor discoverability platform, increasing the visibility of Scottish companies to global investors. Just last month, we published the National Strategy for Economic Transformation. That strategy extends Mark Logan's thinking from the tech domain to all forms of high growth entrepreneurship. On education and talent, there is strong evidence that the creative, commercial and leadership skills necessary to start and scale a business are teachable. So we will embed project-based entrepreneurial learning into school and the post-16 education curricula in partnership with industry. We'll create a new startup apprenticeship, an inventive way of exposing new talent to the startup community and creating a potentially rich source of future founders. And we will embed entrepreneurship in the Young Persons Guarantee, cultivating the business leaders of tomorrow by exposing them to first rate startup techniques and experiences. And presiding officer, as I come to a close on in entrepreneurial infrastructure, the tech scalers are just the beginning. Over time, we will shift their focus from tech to all high growth companies, irrespective of their sector. We'll complement those with a network of what we are calling pre-scalers, smaller community-based hubs that will stimulate the very earliest stages of high growth entrepreneurship by prospective founders to conceive new ideas, to start companies, to design and to develop projects and support early tests of market traction. And as our ecosystem matures and more consistently generates success, 
we will seek to partner with prestigious commercial accelerator programmes, ensuring that the ambitions of our very best companies can be realised in Scotland. Together, these reports commit the government to the most radical reforms of the Scottish entrepreneurial ecosystem since devolution. Our ambition is nothing less than to establish Scotland as one of the leading startup economies in Europe. It's worth remembering that it was a Scottish startup that led the world to the last economic revolution that transformed global living standards and lifted millions of people out of poverty. And presenting officer, in our current context, Brexit, the climate emergency, an uncertain post-pandemic world, the challenges facing us today are just as grave. There have never been limits to the problems that our people can solve. And it's time for Scottish startups to get to work and the government stands full square behind them. Thank you. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we'll move on to the next item of business. I'd be grateful if members who wish to ask a question were to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call Liz Smith. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And uh, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight? And I think the Parliament will be pleased to have uh, some more information about the Stacks Initiative. But can I draw the Cabinet Secretary's attention to the following? In 2008, there were 766 teachers of computing science, and 18 months ago, the number had fallen to 595. In 2001, 28,000 pupils in Scotland were studying computing science. By 2020, it was 9,800. And the number of schools offering the subject as a result of the subject choice issue fell from 2,500 down to 425. So if this initiative is to take place and to be successful, Cabinet Secretary, can I ask what is being done by the SNP to address this subject choice issue? Cabinet Secretary. I thank uh, Liz Smith for that, that question. And I think she identifies in part, although unpacking the numbers is really important, she identifies in part the critical importance of the pipeline of talent coming through our schools in order to then serve, as it were, the, the startup community so that the next generation do become a, the, the startups. Now, one of the areas in the recommendations that we have made the greatest progress on, arguably, is around a, a stacks and around a, ensuring that there is greater choice for young people, both as part of their formal subject choices, but also in terms of their informal and extracurricular activity. Clearly, that starts with, with teachers. So uh, Liz Smith will know that we have uh, offered a bursary of up to £20,000 for career changers to try and attract more teachers in to teach STEM subjects. And the highest uh, demand for teachers needs to be uh, computing. But she asked for a bit more detail about um, uh, stacks. And it, Stacks is a teacher-led organisation, so it starts with teachers, and it's trying to provide support and expertise for computing science teachers across Scotland so that they can teach as effectively as possible, promote skills uh, amongst uh, teachers to be able to meet the need um, amongst young people. Um, and as I said, it's, it, because it's led by teachers, they understand what the challenges are. Part of that, and this is where I'll close, Part of that is about promoting computing science subject choice and a career option for pupils. So whilst we need to make sure that there are enough teachers there to meet the demand, we also need to create the demand in the first place. And I think more work needs to be done to create that demand, which is what um, Stax is also uh, planning uh, on doing or is already doing. Um, and that includes exploratory career sessions with teachers and with parents and with students to try and support it, more students to pick it as a subject, because what we have seen is too many students choosing not to pursue it, not just because of a lack of choice, as Liz Smith says, but also because there just isn't, it isn't the demand. Daniel Johnson. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for a prior sight of the statement. Can I begin by welcoming uh, the, the initiative set out in the statement? It's important that we uh, take our, our, our tech startups and turn them 
into growth uh, organisations, and this is a, a positive step forward. But to go further on Liz Smith's line of questioning, not only did the number of teachers fall by around a quarter in the period from 2008 to uh, 2020, but the number of people entering for higher qualifications dropped from three th just uh, over 3,000, sorry, over 4,200 to 3,200 in the same period. Again, a fall by a quarter. So the cabinet secretary is right to identify that need for a pipeline of talent. But if uh, young people are not studying for hires and we don't have teachers to teach them, what progress can we make? We should not concede that we need to make progress on those fundamentals to make pro progress on that. Can I also ask about tech uptake among small and medium-sized enterprises? While tech startups are important, the recent report by the Productivity Institute, uh, the paper, the Scottish Productivity Challenge, identified a, a poor uptake of technology by SMEs as being a core reason for Scotland's lagging productivity growth. Well, so what steps is the Scottish Government taking to address that vital issue? Cabinet Secretary. Two very important questions. If I start with the education point, and again, I'm not disagreeing with the importance of getting it right in terms of that pipeline of talent. What the statement was designed to do is demonstrate the momentum and the progress that have actually, has actually been made since that recommendation was published in 2020. And one of the first things that we did was establish a steering group led by Mark Logan and Shirley Ann Somerville, um, obviously Cabinet Secretary for Education and Skills. Uh, prior to that, he was engaging with the Deputy First Minister who had responsibility for education. And, and they have a steering group with the most senior leaders from education and skills agencies um, across Scotland to progress changes in computing science in schools. Uh, that has resulted in stacks, which I, I can go into more detail about, but it's also resulted in some critical changes elsewhere. We've provided over a million pounds for additional computing science hardware and software to improve the provision in schools. We've also provided uh, funding to Digital Extra. So uh, through their grant uh, award programme, they aim to inspire young people to learn digital technology skills through high quality, exciting extracurricular activities. I think one of the risks is that we only think you can pursue a career in a tech startup if you've done computing science. It's absolutely vitally important that there will be young people who have never considered doing computing science who need access to those digital skills and trying to encourage them to, to want to study technology and technology related disciplines and ultimately pursue a career is hugely important. It, Daniel Johnson picked up on another very, very important point, which is around um, those sectors perhaps that are not specifically deemed as technology, but in a day and age where every sector is a tech sector, ultimately, one of the, I suppose, um, changes that we have seen emerging from COVID is that prior to COVID, it was perhaps harder to make the case for SMEs investing in digital capabilities, both in the, the skills of their workforce, as well as, as the, the facilities that they use. And COVID has changed that significantly. And we've certainly seen significant uptake of, for example, the digital boost, which is why the commitment to invest £100 million in digital uh, technology, um, giving SMEs access to digital technology really matters. Um, we reopened the £25 million digital boost fund in the first 100 days of this government, recognising the importance, as Daniel Johnson has uh, referred to. Uh, that is more popular than it ever was, not because the digital boost programme has changed, but because the uptake is significantly higher. The appetite is there. And we'll build on that to not just provide the funding, but to provide the expertise. And ultimately, this is probably one of the biggest game changers when it comes to productivity. Claire Adamson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I um, refer members to my Register of Interests, a member of the British Computer Society? Um, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the statement and particularly the emphasis on women and entrepreneurial endeavours in this area? But we know from the Royal Society of Edinburgh's Tapping All Our Talents report that many women have left the tech sector and other STEM areas. 
So what opportunities will there be for people, but particularly women, to retrain in the tech sector? Cabinet Secretary. It's another excellent question, and retraining um, was obviously a, a key theme in, in elements of my statement. So to ensure that when we are uh, trying to bring more women into the sector, uh, we provide routes for them to either return to work or to change their careers. And Code Clan obviously do um, uh, an important work when it comes to uh, retraining and reskilling. But one of the key areas in all of this is around um, the, the, the digital fund I referred to in my statement, which specifically targets those that are furthest from the, the, the job market, the digital start fund. It particularly targets them to undertake intensive courses with providers like Code Clan to give them the skills they need for a well-paid career in tech. And Code, Code Clan, as one example, are absolutely brilliant at helping people where they're at and having visited a few times and I'm sure it Claire Adamson um, is familiar with it and may want to, to visit it herself they are excellent at helping to provide that wraparound support for individuals that are returning to the job market or changing careers it, ultimately in a sector where the there is a real challenge in accessing talent and where the number of women are still disproportionately low, we can solve two challenges by both expanding the, the number of, uh, of, of talented individuals in the sector and ensuring that we increase the number of women in the sector. So this is probably one, again, of uh, the number one commitment as part of uh, in, uh, implementing the STAIR recommendations. Jamie Halker-Johnston. Uh, thank you. Scotland has spent many years lagging behind in STEM and entrepreneurship education, and it's vital that this is belatedly addressed. And as we saw on the technology side during the pandemic, the issuing of laptops to school children across Scotland was plagued with delays and obfuscations, as has been the promise to provide uh, internet-ready devices for young people in Scotland since the election. We have an education and apprenticeship system that has been bruised by two years of COVID and will take time to recover. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, when she speaks about new start-up apprenticeships and entrepreneurial learning in schools, when precisely will these be delivered? Cabinet Secretary. Well, they are already being delivered. So this is not, we're obviously keen to expand and to grow them, but in terms of the apprenticeship model, that has already been adapted. So for example, we have far more young people choosing to do a cyber apprenticeship than before. Many of them are choosing to work and study simultaneously, and there are a number of tech businesses that are taking advantage of that apprenticeship model already. In terms of expanding, for example, the Young Persons Guarantee, work has started on that. We are pleased to be working with Young Enterprise Scotland to look at how we can do this as effectively as possible through the Young Persons Guarantee so that there are a number of routes for young people into uh, the tech sector. So a lot of this has started. We're building on that progress and expanding it. And the key thing about the National Strategy for Economic Transformation is it takes a lot of the most successful interventions in the tech sector and tech entrepreneurship and expands it across the entrepreneurship domain so that it isn't just unique to the tech sector. Thompson, to be followed by Paul Sweeney. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her statement and celebrate the ambition contained within it, particularly the actions regarding women. If I could, I'd like to ask a question specific to my constituency of Falkirk East, and it concerns data flows as a critical enabling technology. Indeed, only recently the US President Joe Biden and the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen made a joint declaration on co cooperation regarding their value. Germany is leading within Europe and the German government has mandated Obashi, a pioneering firm, eh, as the method to map and model their government data flows. Will the Minister meet with me and Abashi Senior Management at their site in Stenhouse Muir to learn about how Scotland and the Scottish Government could be utilising and world leading with this critical new technology? Cabinet Secretary. 
Well, I thank Michelle Thompson for bringing that to my attention. And it's great to see what is being done uh, in her constituency of Falkirk East. I'm particularly keen in looking at how we use data more effectively and how we support businesses working in that field of data. Uh, and I'd be very happy to uh, get further information from her and to consider how we can support that work, uh, including uh, by meeting with the, uh, the relevant business. Paul Sweeney to be followed by Willie Coffey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Mark Logan's company Skyscanner was sold to C-Trip of China for £1.4 billion in 2016. I don't think that's necessarily a success story for the Scottish economy. I think that reveals a major strategic weakness in companies of high-scale potential being lost to overseas ownership. So what measures might the Scottish Government consider to protect Scottish startups through that critical growth phase? Would they consider direct measures, such as government taking golden shares in companies to shield them from predatory overseas takeovers, or perhaps, as Mark Logan himself has identified, a strategic weakness in coaching a critical mass of senior executive leadership in Scotland have the confidence to keep their headquarters in Scotland through an initial public offering of shares, rather than selling to an overseas multinational? Cabinet Secretary. Well, there were a number of recommendations which were progressing specifically around investment and investment funding to avoid the situation whereby for a Scottish startup to expand, to grow, to develop, they need to access funding um, elsewhere. And whilst um, you know, I don't think anyone would dispute that Skyscanner has uh, been a success, some of the recommendations looked at, for example, uh, establishing a Series A fund and a partnership between the Scottish Government, Scottish VCs, and external uh, investors looked at investment vehicles specifically for certain groups, like female founders. It looked at the need to identify where grant support is effective and where it's ineffective. And it looked at Scottish VCs partnering with Scottish Government on um, a, a number of uh, joint uh, initiatives, including uh, maintaining and publicising a live database of all angels and all startups in Scotland. Now, uh, quite obviously, um, there's the bigger issue at stake here, which is ultimately that keeping businesses in Scotland is about delivering a, an environment in which they want to continue doing business. So we can put in place a number of these interventions, and I've just rattled through a few of the recommendations very quickly. Not all of them will necessarily be relevant to the example that he cites. But ultimately, it's about building up the wider ecosystem, the wider infrastructure, the wider environment, so at every stage of a startup and then at scale ups, a growth, there is access to either investment funding or talent or whatever it else, ever else it is that will either stop them from growing in Scotland or enable them to continue to be headquartered in Scotland. Thank you. I appreciate the Cabinet Secretary's desire to provide comprehensive responses, but there are many members who would like to put a question this afternoon, so I would be grateful if they could be made um, more concise. And I call Willie Coffey to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Thanks, President Officer. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary how she will ensure that there are equal opportunities and access for children in our more deprived communities to benefit from technology education, and whether we can provide additional resources where they may be required? Cabinet Secretary. I think the point that Willie Coffey references is one of the key themes coming through the National Strategy for Economic Transformation. It talked about apprenticeships, but it very specifically talked about apprenticeships for those underrepresented groups. And those underrepresented groups might be uh, along the lines of, of gender, income inequality, ethnicity, uh, focusing on expanding the, 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 the pool and creating that equity of access. So, our priority is to roll out apprenticeships specifically amongst those um, underrepresented groups. Thank you. Liam MacArthur to be followed by Siobhan Brown. Uh, thank you. Can I warmly welcome the announcement by the Cabinet Secretary of new investment in building Scotland's tech sector, although the measure of success will not be in the number of start-ups, but those that kick on for the longer term. 
Fundamental to supporting this sector and future start startups is ensuring we have the necessary digital infrastructure. Yet we know many parts of Scotland are being left badly behind through delayed superfast broadband rollout, particularly in island and rural areas. So what confidence can the Cabinet Secretary give this chamber that the ambitions that she's quite reasonably set out will be met with delivery on the ground over the next decade? Cabinet Secretary. Well, it's a fair question if we care about uh, equity of access. The point I would make right now is that we still have much to do with the 95% the of access to uh, broadband that already exists. Quite clearly, the R100 programme needs to ensure that every property has access uh, to, to broadband, which we will progress, we will ensure is delivered, uh, despite the fact that it is a, a reserved area and we're stepping in the breach to do that. Uh, so he's right to say that there's two sides of the same coin, uh, but ultimately uh, that work is progressing I know many communities, not least the ones that Liam MacArthur represents, would like to see us go faster, further and deeper into their communities. We will do what we can. Um, and the R100 programme is continuing to try and meet it, where, meet that, that shortfall where it exists. Siobhan Brown to be followed by Maggie Chapman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her statement this afternoon? It's important to be clear that developing the tech sector is not just about IT and apps. But the tech is the foundation of sectors like the space and aerospace industry, which the export plan identifies as growth areas in Scotland. Presswick Airport is an integral to thousands of jobs in, in the aerospace industry in my constituency. Can I ask the Minister what role Presswick Airport and Presswick Spaceport will play in meeting our ambitious goals? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the member quite rightly points out that every community, every business and every key national asset uh, like Presswick Airport uh, is part of this ambition to be a world leading tech nation. And a lot of these uh, communities, particularly under the Ayrshire growth deal, for example, are already making significant steps. And I've been in uh, contact with a number of uh, individuals from um, those communities, uh, particularly around the HALO project uh, and so on, to try and see how we can integrate our plan for tech scalers with work that is already ongoing. I think it would be dangerous to suggest that the work I've just outlined right now is the first of its kind. This is about bringing together a lot of the great work that's already going on in the Scottish ecosystem uh, and providing support, including to uh, the members' uh, businesses in her constituency. Maggie Chapman, to be followed by Fiona Hislop. Thank you. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her statement, which I welcome. There is much to commend in it. I'd like to ask about support for digital solutions to social and environmental problems. The sharing economy for good can play a key role in designing new solutions for certain challenges we face, not all of which have a commercial or, commodifi or commodifiable elements. They will therefore need ongoing investment or support, especially if there are rapid growth trajectories predicted. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what support will be available for the mission and challenge approach for designing new solutions and for the sharing economy for good more generally? Cabinet Secretary. Well, it's a really important question because Tech for Good has grown significantly in recent years. And we want to provide that support to social enterprises and others. This isn't just about the private sector working to create wealth. This is about solving a lot of the biggest issues that we face. And the tech for good sector is critical in that regard. And it, working with um, those social enterprises and charities and others to embrace the opportunities that technology presents it is really important too. Fiona has looked to be followed by Tess White. Can the Cabinet Secretary set out further what steps have been taken to ensure women's tech business play a full and leading part in transforming Scotland's tech sector? And what does she think success will look like? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the Tech Ecosystem Fund has uh, been supporting multiple events run by and for women with over £160,000 of funding given to Women's Enterprise Scotland, 
um, uh, Female Founders Squad, Mint Ventures, um, and other organisations who are providing learning and peer networking opportunities um, and helping to overcome some of the challenges faced by women in tech. There is a clear gender gap in business participation in Scotland. Closing that gap, unlocking the full economic potential of women in enterprise will have a transformative impact on Scotland's economic performance. And we certainly have, as part of our commitment to fund 50 million pounds worth of uh, support towards women in enterprise, we'll be considering how we better close that gap. And that's where Anna Stewart's work, um, who obviously as an experienced entrepreneur is so critical when it comes to that independent short life review of the support landscape for women. What does success look like? Success looks like 50% uh, of uh, women businesses, female businesses, it looks like equal participation and equal sharing of the opportunities uh, amongst women and men when it comes to technology. Tess White to be followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Logan Review highlights that on, a, on average, 84% of students studying higher computing science are male in any given year. What action is the Scottish Government taking to address the chronic gender imbalance in computing science at school level, which has resulted in a huge loss of talent from the workforce pipeline for tech startups? Cabinet Secretary. Absolutely. So there's clear recommendations to contend with that. Some of the recommendations I've already referred to in previous answers, some of them are around overcoming gender stereotyping in, in early years. So this is where um, young women like Tony Scullion's work is so critical, because being able to provide that extracurricular activity that creates equity of access to opportunities to learn is so important, alongside seeing role models, seeing uh, female founders, celebrating uh, female computing science teachers is, 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 is critical to all of this. So right now, Education Scotland have a dedicated team that are working with schools and with early learning centres specifically to try and deal with that early gender stereotyping and then to ensure that that carries on throughout primary school and throughout high school and ultimately into the university years as well. So there's specific interventions I can refer to in terms of the work that Education Scotland's doing, Tony Scullion's doing, the extracurricular activity, but I think there's a bigger issue around the visibility of successful women in technology and successful female entrepreneurs to inspire young women to see themselves uh, in that role in the future. And Brian Whittle. Hey, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the issue of uh, poor cyber security has been raised uh, recently with several high-profile breaches. Does the Cabinet Secretary, uh, or can the Cabinet Secretary tell us if the Scottish Government have any plans to develop and promote this side of the tech industry? Because actually many young people who maybe perhaps have no official qualifications actually are the ones uh, with a great ability with computers and maybe actually the ideal recruits to this developing sector. Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, is it another good question? So yes is the short answer. And one of the points that we're keen to avoid is having to retrofit cybersecurity to digital solutions. So as we roll out and as we're keen to see more SMEs embracing the opportunity of technology, that needs to go hand in hand with its cybersecurity. And we have been providing financial support in the past, vouchers in the past to help SMEs do that. The second part, though, is around uh, introducing the fundamentals of cyber skills from the earliest years onwards. So there's a pipeline of talent in this area as well. And um, you know, there's, there's examples of, of where that's, that's been done successfully. So you know, th the last point I would make is, is around um, that inspiring uh, of, of young people uh, through extracurricular clubs and so on. So we've got cyber discovery, we've got the cyber first programs. So that, again, we're not seeing cyber as an afterthought. Um, and I've already referred to some of the cyber apprenticeships. Uh, that, that, that all goes hand in hand with promoting good practice and best practice across the public sector, private sector and third sectors as well. 
Thank you. That concludes the ministerial statement on transforming Scotland's tech sector. There will be a brief pause before the next item of business.